The INFP has to be the most misunderstood personality types ever. They have a tendency to be contradictory in so many ways, and I mean this in the best possible way. I will go into why this is, and hopefully it will help you understand INFPs better. Their natural contradictions come in large part by their incredible self-awareness while simultaneously lacking all sense of self. Yes, you heard that correctly. I know it sounds almost impossible possible to be self-aware with no sense of self, but this is really where the INFP's charm comes from. Their dominant introverted feeling function makes them highly interested in other people's inner workings. I wanted to see what you'd do, and you didn't disappoint. You let five people die. Then you let Dent take your place. Even to a guy like me, that's cold. Okay, again, another contradiction. Yes, introverted feelers are extremely focused on objective feeling or other people's feelings. This particular contradiction is not the INFP's fault. It's a relic of the origin of type. When Carl Jung was conceiving the concepts of his cognitive functions, he was looking through the lens of introversion is subjective interpretations and and extroversion is more as a matter of fact. Things that people can agree on would be objective truths and things that can't be easily explained nor consensus made about it must be subjective. As time passed, many misnomers persisted into differing theories, such as MBTI and Socionics. To this day, if you look at any of the literature, FI is seen as an awareness of one's own personal feelings. They usually switch and contradict themselves by saying, saying that they come across aloof and unemotional. In today's modern age, we have technology that can see which parts of the brain does what. Dario Nardi specifically states that one brain region FI users use most actually listens to the tone in voices. A very important brain region that FI users use is the right temporal parietal junction, which gives out-of-body experiences. It puts yourself into other people's shoes. This allows them to weigh intent. All of this information is objective. The tone tells them how the speaker feels about something. The outer body experience gives insights into the other person's intent. I went out on four different dates with three girls and that guy, I don't, I don't know what his intentions were, but like, it, it's fine, we had a great conversation, he was just looking for a friend. None of this is subjective, but if you look at extroverted feelers, they are very aware of their own feelings on everything. People, words, facial expressions, and all contextual information. In fact, your sense of self comes from knowing what type of person you are, or at least what things you would and would not do. This is subjective information, and as we have said, it is extroverted feeling that is aware of it. I will go into this further in future videos, but that being said, this is why the INFP is very self-aware. They try to understand intent within others, which they do by consistently hashing out their own inner workings. They can be consistently changing their own norms and outward expressions. This is why they have very little sense of self. You know, every character is sort of this version of yourself and they are versions of me all these characters but they can do any number of things as long as it's fits into their moral code their creative cognitive function is extroverted intuition which loves to see different possibilities i was expecting some kind of pulsating growth or a cluster of lumps or or, or, or like a little that, I don't know, talked. The one-two punch of their ego functions, F-I-N-E, makes them the most likely type to listen to viewpoints that oppose their own. Before making the Red Pill movie, I was a feminist of about 10 years. I started to research this rape culture. A website called A Voice for Men popped up. Paul Elam wrote about how women long to live out their rape fantasies to be taken by a man she's never spoken to, let alone given consent to. 
Amazingly, they can truly listen to understand. Unlike most personality types, this makes them amazing investigative journalists whom will give all sides a fair shake. It turns out I did meet my enemy while filming. It was my ego saying that I was right and they were subhuman. Their superego functions also play a very large role in why they make great investigative journalists. The superego is the part of our psyche that the world wants to push on us, but we refuse. It does come out in our personality, but in a very instinctual way. The first function we will discuss in the superego block is the role introverted thinking function. This function is in direct competition with the dominant introverted feeling function. It takes the same role, but expressed differently. So TI likes to categorize, but so does FI, except it categorizes by feelings. If it feels like something, then it is that feeling. He's like having a real dinosaur in your house. It's kind of amazing, and he's alive. Even though it is more of an approximation than a true categorization, it takes its place because now a concrete categorization is no longer needed. Trans women are women, which is true. We are women. This is actually seen to the INFP as a weakness, one that is worth addressing, but you can only address it when not using FI. So it is usually used in private. They can tend to make logical arguments only to contradict the argument with empathy and seeing the other side. We need to have reason and science and logic and facts on our side so that we can explain to society that we are valid and that we are real. Otherwise, bad things. Well, maybe there's a better theory. Well, okay, Socrates, let's hear it then. The way I see it, gender is either psychological or biological or social. Now, my friend Tabby, the cat girl, she thinks it's all psychological, that it's just identity, that whatever you think about your own gender is true. And that makes me really uncomfortable because then what's the difference between identifying as a woman and identifying as a Norwegian forest cat? It's a difference that Tabby herself seems not to have much of a grip on. Girl, that's literally what I've been trying to tell you about transgenders this entire time. Just let me finish. If gender is strictly biological, then that's game over for trans people, unless you make some kind of wrong brain and the wrong body argument, but I told you I'm not buying that. So that leaves gender as a social construct. Are you gonna try to make me read Judith Butler again? I'll summarize it. Gender is a series of gestures. It's called performativity. It's the way you dress, it's the way you speak, it's the way you act, it's the way you relate to other people. Through transitioning, we habituate to the gestures of womanhood, and socially, that makes us women, regardless of biology or psychology, checkmate transphobes. Okay, the problem with that is that it's both too exclusionary and too inclusive. It excludes a lot of trans people who can't transition for circumstantial reasons, but whose dysphoria is very real. And it includes every trans trender, drag queen, fetishist, and two-bit cross-dressing comedian in a Dynal wig. Uh, well, do you really believe that a man who plays a woman on stage becomes just as much of a woman as you and me? Uh, yes? Bitch, no you don't. <sighs> yeah, you're right. <sighs> This leads them to thoroughly hash out all sides of the argument, yet completely unable to propose practical solutions, other than to be more accepting in general. I no longer call myself a feminist, but I must clarify, I am not anti-feminist, and I am not a men's rights activist. I still support women's rights, and I now care about men's rights as well. However, I believe if we want to honestly discuss gender equality, we need to invite all voices to the table. The other superego function is the vulnerable function extroverted sensing, which they do not care about and have no interest in improving. This makes them aloof to power plays, positions of authority, and hierarchical structures in general. They will fight for their beliefs regardless of who or what opposes them. Disney disagreed. They were welcome to fire me and replace me if they wanted to, and because uh, I wasn't gonna wasn't going to change what I built because I, I believed in it and I believed in the character wholeheartedly. I was hearing about Michael Eisner, who was running Disney at the time, screaming at the top of his lungs, Depp is ruining the film! 
we're gonna have to subtitle and nobody can understand what he's saying. What, what is he doing? Oh my God. Rather than debating the merit of the issues addressed in the film, I became the target of a smear campaign. The Super Id block includes aspects of reality that we enjoy, but that we are weak at. We tend to see these things as tasks best left to others, but we love being supported in our own use of them. The suggestive function of the INFP is extroverted thinking, so they love having people around who have practical, pragmatic solutions to problems. Given a need for these solutions, the INFP can feel inspired to create them. In fourth grade, I peed my pants on several occasions, and everybody started calling me Stainer. And you know how I made it through those dark days? Kirk. You see, he told me to own that name, call myself Stainer so that nobody could hurt me with it. So how's your sister doing? She turns 21 next week, and she, I, she still has no sense of direction. You know? She's coming over for dinner, and I really, I really want to give her advice, but I don't know what to say to her, you know? You don't know what to say to her. She's only 20. She's not 30. And she's not you. Sorry. You know? I, when I was 20, I did not have my act together, man. I mean, look at this kid now. <laughs> I'm in TSA. I am living the dream. You're right. Maybe I am being too hard on her. And, and I'm sorry, but she's coming over for dinner. She's turning 21. You gotta throw her a party. I mean, that's what you do for a living, right? You throw parties. The mobilizing function of the INFP is introverted sensation. This function monitors the body's reaction to its environment. It strives to make its environment satiating. So if something is out of place, the SI user wants to put it in its correct place. It notices lies by categorizing things into satiating and unsatiating, usually striving to uphold traditions the INFP values this, but too much is overwhelming. Well, what line of work are you in, son? It's kind of a long story. Uh, I grew up... Crooks in aviation. Another pilot. Really? <laughs> you lied about me to your parents right in front of me. No, I didn't. Crooks in aviation? That's like saying the guy who shovels elephant shit at the circus isn't show business. No, he's just the elephant shit guy. The id block is an incredibly powerful subconscious that drives behavior with little to no conscious understanding. The ignoring function is extroverted feeling in the INFP. FE is all about interest and maintaining social appropriateness to obtain your desires. Oh, I'm sorry, one second. Hey, ma'am? Ma'am, yeah, I'll be right back. Notice how he is foregoing his own interests and desires to help a stranger with their problem. From a strictly F.E. perspective, he is saying that he has less interest in his date than a random person. So INFPs tend to forego sympathy in preference of empathy. If on the other hand, there is no ethical opposition, they are extremely polite and generally have good manners. The demonstrative function is the part Part of the id block that actually does come to consciousness. It helps the creative function and is actually a rather powerful part of the psyche. For the INFP, this is introverted intuition, which gives them a sixth sense in predicting outcomes. Oh, fuck it. Are you seriously not wearing any underwear? Tell him. Deb, we're all thinking it. If you want to plan an exit strategy or leave right now, I, I won't be offended. No, I'm not going anywhere. What do you do? I'm an event planner. See? That's a business to get into. That's using your head. Thank you, Dylan. No, wait for it. I mean, book a band, blow up a few balloons. People pay out the ass for that shit, don't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. In conclusion, INFPs are very empathetic, caring individuals whom tend to be a lot smarter than people give them credit for. That's us. We're stuck that way, you and me, sensitive touch. They listen to and genuinely care about people and their opinions. On the other hand, if they feel something is wrong, they have a dark side. For instance, the unfair nature of logic and reason. You know what I noticed? Nobody panics when things go according to plan. Even if the plan is horrifying. Introduce a little anarchy. Upset the established order and everything becomes chaos. I'm an agent of chaos. Oh, and you know the thing about chaos? 
it's fair. If order and reason is what causes all the pain they feel in the world, the only answer left is chaos and emotion. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to see more content. If you want to understand more about why we all perceive the world so differently, check out this video on the fourth dimension. And until next time, mahalo.